Alright guys, it is a cloudy, gloomy, soon to be stormy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on uh... <laughs> Where are we? We are on Friday morning, April 3rd, 2020 here on our lockdown, our social isolation lockdown in Garfield, Texas. Just hanging out with the little chirpy birdies on this spring day. Uh, oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza. And you have <laughs> stumbled <coughs> into the latest edition of the Coronavirus Chronicles here uh, on what used to be Collapse Chronicles. Uh, where each day I bring you the latest news of how the coronavirus has put this planet and yet its latest frying pan versus the fire uh, <coughs> position. How many frying pans versus the fire do we have on this planet? But before I get into this latest, I do want to send out a big thank you to uh, my angel, Marty Knudsen. <laughs> Marty, uh, whoever you are, brother, uh, I want to thank Marty for his latest kind donation, the dwindling, collapsing donations to this channel for what I do on YouTube. But Marty, whoever you are, I really, really appreciate your, your continuing patronage for what I do, particularly as uh, like I'm getting ready to do, uh, just making more and more enemies down here in the Doomosphere for taking a contrary, a contrarian position to the herd of panicked sheeple that has taken over the planet. Uh, yeah, so anyway, thank you Marty for sticking with me. And so for today's frying pan versus the fire, article uh, <coughs> I'm actually uh, somewhat pleasantly shocked I received this one from none other than my my I guess my soul sister down here in the Doomosphere Sandy Shellis over there at environmental coffee house I I've been watching Sandy's coverage of the coronavirus uh, and so when she sent me this one I, I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but anyway, Sandy, whatever you're thinking, uh, maybe you are finally uh, widening your scope and understanding that on the other side of the fire, well, I guess on the other side of the frying pan waits the fire, that uh, it makes no difference how the how we approach this you know the, the, the how we react both officially and uh, and as just general public panic sheep uh, whether you are a member of the Orwellian police state locking down this planet or whether you're one of the panic sheeple uh, cheering on the Orwellian police state. There, there's, there's some bad news, guys, is uh, a lot of people are going to die by the coronavirus. It makes no difference how we react to this. This, this virus is going to get you or it's not. And uh, so where are we? I hear we have passed the one million mark of the coronavirus on this planet. Uh, on this planet, which means by my math that one person out of every 7,700 people, for every 7,700 people on this planet, one of them has gotten coronavirus. I guess 50,000 of them have died so far. So 57, let's see, 50,000, there's, that's about in the next four hours, 
more or less as many people will be born on the planet uh, as have died in the year 2020 from the coronavirus. They will be replaced in the next four hours. But anyway, I realize I'm getting myself deeper and deeper in uh, the hole. But we're going to uh, go over to this story uh, from this <clears throat> website. I've mentioned it before. I've read other essays off of this recently. Medium dot com and unfortunately I'm gonna put the link on here and uh, because this link has all sorts of these charts and graphs to uh, you know to to graph what they're talking about here uh, so you'll have to go on the link to read this anyway let's get to it the latest frying pan versus the fire a oh yeah guys uh, okay and and, and 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 I must make a uh, a a quick apology because I have said that I am not going to discuss how many people are going to die from the coronavirus on this channel so uh, I guess I lied because hopefully this will be the the only uh, one of these. <coughs> anyway, a call to honesty in pandemic modeling. Recently, there has been a proliferation of modeling work, which has been used to make the point that if we can stay inside, practice extreme social distancing, and generally lock down non-essential parts of society for several months, then many deaths from COVID-19 can be prevented. And I'm not, you can go read this for yourself. So what he does, what they do at medium.com uh, is what they do is they, is they show you a few of the most cited models as everyone tries to figure out how many people are going to die. Uh, I mean, the, the, it, it makes no mention of how old they are, their pre-existing conditions, whatever. Uh, just the total number of deaths. So it, it runs through some of the most cited models, you know, that the mainstream media is using to instill all of this panic to the one out of 7,700 people on the planet who have gotten coronavirus. Okay, but let's get down to the point of the story after that. <clears throat> all right. Hiding infections in the future is not the same as avoiding them. And uh, what, what, what they're talking about, just to summarize, is how all of these models, uh, you know, that, that act like th that these extreme uh, economic uh, activity lockdowns are going to miraculously save people in two to six weeks. Uh, that if you continue them out, you have an inconvenient truth that down the line, it just goes right back up again, bigger than ever. All right, hiding, in, in effect, hiding infections in the future. This is exactly what Gail Tverberg uh, speaks about in my interview with her uh, that I had uh, a few days ago, and is also the reason that <clears throat> Gail Tverberg's video was the most thumbs down, voted down by the clueless panicked sheeple. She was pointing out exactly as this is, that if you, if what we're doing now is simply kicking the can down the road. It's not like you can just restart the economy uh, in a few weeks you know, in two weeks or two months or whatever, and not expect the same thing to happen all over again, and again, and again, and again. 
uh, the virus is going to burn through. Anyway, all right. A keen figure reader will notice something peculiar in, you know, in one of these graphs that he shows. At the tail end of Christoph's social distancing for two months scenario, there is an intriguing rise in the number of infections. Could it be exponential right before the figure ends? That is because of an inevitable feature of realistic models of epidemics. Once transmission rates return to normal, the epidemic will just proceed largely as it would have without mitigations, unless a significant fraction of the population uh, is immune. Uh, either because they have recovered from the infection or because an effective vaccine has been developed or the infectious agent has been completely eliminated without risk of reintroduction. Uh, in the case of the model presented in Christoph's article, assumptions about seasonality of the virus combined with the longer mitigation period simply push the epidemic outside the window they consider. For example, in our work studying the possible effects <clears throat> of heterogeneous measures, we presented examples of epidemic trajectories for COVID-19 assuming no mitigation at all or assuming extreme mitigations which are gradually lifted at six months to resume normal levels at one year. And I know you, you got to look at all of these graphs to uh, this, this does take some work. Unfortunately, extreme mitigation efforts which end even gradually reduce the number of deaths only by one percent or so. As the mitigation efforts let up, we will see a full-scale epidemic since almost none of the population has developed immunity to the virus. This is real rocket science, the inconvenient truth that all of these people uh, including about 95% of my own friends, will not look at. In the case of Christoph, the epidemic model being employed is actually implemented in JavaScript anyway. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this means that it is actually possible to hack their model to run past the end of October. In particular, we can look into the future and see what happens in their model after October, assuming mitigations continue for two months. In particular, instead of the right-hand figure here just starting up, the truth for their social distancing for two months scenario is in fact, this, and this is the only one I am going to offer, is because one of these big sighted things, you know, it, this is what will happen right afterwards when, the, when these uh, lockdowns are removed. You will see 180 million infections hidden in the future. You know, it's like whack-a-mole. This is like uh, coronavirus whack-a-mole. Uh, as soon as you think that you that you whacked the mole down in the ground, he's just gonna pop up again. And then what the hell are you gonna do? Are you just gonna whack him down again? The, the, you know, guys, this is good. This is this whack-a-mole game is gonna go right on until a quote real pandemic gets here, which will make uh, the coronavirus uh, seem like a case of moles in your yard. Anyway,
back to this article. <clears throat> so, two months of mitigations have not improved the outcome of the epidemic in this model. It has just delayed its terrible effects. In fact, because of the role of weather in the model uh, presented in the Kristoff article, two months of mitigations actually results in 50% more, 50% more infections and deaths than two weeks of mitigations since it pushes the peak of the epidemic to the winter instead of the summer whose warmer months this model assumes causes lower transmission rates. I, I have no idea why they're making that assumption, this whole assumption that uh, January or July. Anyway, <clears throat> the same thing plays out in other papers modeling a low number of infections or deaths from short-term suppression efforts. For example, Murray's model, uh, <clears throat> Murray's paper models, that's a birdie, that's not a squirrely, that was just, that was, that was Mr. Wren. You don't chase the wrens and the cardinals, you just chase the squirrels. Murray's paper models four months of mitigations, but only models the epidemic over a four month period ending in July. He concludes that less than 100,000 people will die in his model. But what happens in August? <coughs> Uh, he obtains improvements in death rates in his model precisely because a small minority of the population becomes infected in his mitigation window. <clears throat> in fact, as soon as transmission levels increase, a large epidemic will follow, which he would detect if he modeled the epidemic past four months. Similarly, in the Lancet study uh, modeling mitigations in Wuhan, the only effect of delaying the end of mitigations is to delay the epidemic. Infections are reduced in 2020 but increased at latter time points, and we're already seeing uh, on the mainstream media uh, some somewhat honest reports. That now, obviously, guys, we all understand that the Chinese government has been lying out their teeth about how many people have died in China. What are they saying, 3,000? A hell of a lot more than any 3,000 people in that country are dead of coronavirus. Uh, any fool knows that. But already, uh, you know, as soon as they start, uh, you know, loosening up on the lockdowns, they're already seeing uh, this happen. It's going to be uh, until we just uh, let this virus burn, baby burn, it's going to be planet lockdown. Uh, and uh, the, the effects of the lockdown as it continues, which this article does not even talk about, are going to far exceed the, uh, the, the death rates and everything else if we just let this thing burn. But uh, I understand I probably just lost 10 subscribers by that statement. <clears throat> All right. There is a simple truth behind the problems with these modeling conclusions. The duration of containment efforts does not matter if transmission rates return to normal when they end and mortality rates have not improved. This is simply because as long as a large majority of the population remains uninfected, lifting containment measures will lead to an epidemic 
almost as large as would have happened without having mitigation mitigations in place at all. Uh, mitigations themselves are not saving lives in these scenarios. Instead, it is what we do with the time that gives us an opportunity to improve the outcome of the epidemic. And uh, so then he spends quite a while. So, okay, I, I, he does give a small nod that uh, kicking the can down the road, the very best we can hope from this, if, if there's anything to be gained by this is that it gives us time, you know, to develop a vaccine. I was reading today in the mainstream media, we're minimally a year out, probably 18 months or longer out before any sort of a vaccine. And by then, uh, we will be living in the Stone Age, which of course is a good thing for the planet. Okay. Uh, Okay, we should say that all the papers we quote here are clear about what they model and none claimed explicitly to model the number of infections or deaths that would happen over the entire course of the epidemic. Uh, if one reads all of Christoph's paper, an honest disclaimer is eventually encouraged, encountered quoting the paper that so many mainstream media outlets are quoting without mentioning this little asterisk. A skeptic will note that these measures do not seem to prevent a surge in infections so much as a, as a delay, in some cases so that the impact is pushed beyond the period that this model tracks. There you go. Uh, but back back to the story here. But by this point, after figures with total infections labeled in bold have been tweeted to millions of followers, the model has already played its role in misleading the public. Uh, Moreover, the fixed time window they choose for their model means that users cannot discover this basic truth for themselves. In particular, we suggest that no model whose purpose is to study the overall benefits of mitigation should end at a time point before a steady state is reached. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these are all assumptions that can and should be made explicit and quantitative in a model that attempts to estimate effects of an overall mortality. Without making these assumptions explicit, it is impossible to debate whether they are reasonable or to estimate the sensitivity of the model's conclusions. Uh, so where are we now? <clears throat> Nations around the world are staring down a host of terrible options. There is no way out. This is a frying pan or a fire. Uh, option that we have that nobody in this panicked herd of sheeple uh, wants to admit. This is the big in uh, the inconvenient truth. There is no way out of this. Nations around the world are staring down a host of terrible options. Business as usual means overrun hospitals and large numbers of preventable deaths. One or two years of suppression measures and wait 
for a vaccine means a global shutdown whose full ramifications will require input from experts across multiple domains to fully understand. Do you think so? Uh, the viability of middle roads is still debated by experts. But what should be absolutely clear is that hard decisions lie ahead and that there are no easy answers. Uh, <clears throat> the team at, Imperio, at Imperial, which recently released a new study currently serving as the basis for the UK's new efforts as containment summarizes the situation this way, quote, it is important to note that we do not quantify in the model that the UK is basing its decisions on. Uh, it is important to note that we do not quantify the wider societal and economic impacts of such intensive suppression approaches. These are likely to be substantial, nor do we quantify the potentially different societal and economic impact of mitigation strategies. Moreover, for countries lacking the infrastructure capable of implementing technology-led suppression maintenance strategies, such as those currently being pursued in Asia, uh, careful thought will need to be given to pursuing such strategies in order to avoid a high risk of future health system failure once suppression measures are lifted. And getting to the final paragraph. <clears throat> Regardless of which strategies various governments will eventually turn to in the fight against coronavirus, their success will hinge in large part on the cooperation of the public maintaining effective suppression on a time scale of years would require extraordinary levels of compliance from citizens. The public should not be misled by presenting false stories of hope to motivate better behavior in the short term. <clears throat> public health depends on public trust. If we claim now that our models show that two months of mitigation will cut deaths by 90%, why will anyone believe us two months from now when that story has to change? Thank you, and uh, I understand. I am talking to myself. I am racking up thumbs down and losing subscribers by the minute. But, you know, uh, sometimes in life you just have to decide uh, when it's time to stand up for an unpopular uh, opinion based on the evidence uh, that more and more people, uh, I cannot speak for Sandy Shellis. Sandy, would you please comment on this story? Are you beginning to see the other side, the inconvenient truth of this? I do predict that uh, particularly uh, within two months, more and more people will be coming around to, uh, quote, my side uh, of the story. Uh, my side of the story, for what it's worth, is it is the frying pan or the fire. Uh, but this kicking the, this uh, down the road, guys, uh, oh well, 
just keep kicking it down the road as 10 million, 10 million Americans now waiting for their unemployment check. Uh, you know, we're talking working age Americans, uh, 10 million uh, Americans knocked out of the housing market. 10 million Americans knocked out of the buying a new car market, which is damn good news for the planet. Uh, anyway, you make your choices and you stick with them, but uh, I predict you will see some about faces coming up as more and more people understand how screwed we really are. And it is starting to rain, so uh, I need to wrap up this uh, coronavirus chronicle. And I won't even ask anybody to thumb up this video or subscribe to uh, coronavirus chronicles. But if you're sick and tired of hearing about the coronavirus, I will be coming back since it is Friday with my least viewed uh, video of the week, and that is my Collapse Chronicles Friday Manga Bay Roundup, uh, looking at dozens of stories about a collapsing planet that are being completely buried as the environmental news about threats to this planet nowhere on the mainstream media but if you have any interest in a few of the stories about uh, how this planet is collapsing uh, without the C word come over to Collapse Chronicles for that uh, video coming up in one minute enjoy your lockdown as you decide between frying pan or fire. Bye guys.